Tonight, I'm going to share with you three keys to be able to have long-term success, long-term profitable success. A lot of times people say, Jackie, what's the secret? What's been your secret? You see, I started out as a 20-something year old working full-time as a registered nurse. I lived in North Carolina at the time, and I was just looking for a way to be able to make some extra money on the side. I wanted to be able to build a business and do something on my own around my nursing profession. I started a business online in the travel industry, and eventually that business went from literally zero to ended up growing to the first year we did like 70,000, the second year did 120,000. Eventually, worldwide, we ended up doing over $100 million uh, with that business. And, and that was over a 15 year period. So people are like, you know, what's the secret to success? And I say, it's not about the secret to success. Anybody can get lucky and have a little bit of success for a short season. It's how do you maintain long-term success and, and keep growing that success year over year and, and prevent yourself from, you know, getting tore down or, or distracted when there's like a bad economy, for example, or some sort of a recession? How do you maintain that growth in your life? and in your business. And I'm gonna share with you what I think are at least three keys tonight, and there's a lot more I could, I'll tell you how you can get more, but three keys to success, let's get into this tonight. Key number one, and this is something that I have always, always believed in, and that is you, you have to have a, a can-do attitude, a growth mindset, if you will. You, you have to believe that you can learn anything, and, and that's something people hear me say that all, all the time. I can learn anything. I can, I can eventually do anything. It doesn't mean that I can do it the fastest. It doesn't mean that I'm going to, you know, have the, the, have the best memory and the highest intellect. It means I can work hard enough to be able to learn whatever skill I need to overcome whatever obstacle is in front of me. And so it's important to understand that with a growth mindset, you understand that you control your destiny far more than your destiny controls who you are. A lot of people feel like that they, they become a victim of their circumstances, even people that are successful. When things are going good, it's easy to feel empowered. But when things are going bad and, and the advertising is not working, you're trying to grow a business and you know the ads aren't pulling the way they're supposed to pull or you're losing money somewhere because there's a bad hire and you're trying to problem solve and it, feels like the, the, it can feel like the world's closing in on you and things aren't going well. It is important for you to understand that, no, 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 wait a minute, I can figure this out. I, I got this, I can take charge, and I know what to do, and if I don't know what to do, I know how to find it. Find out. I'm not going to stop until I figure out the solution to this particular problem. You have to have a growth mindset without question, because with that growth mindset becomes resilience to adversity, meaning you understand that you can adapt, you can adjust, you can move forward. So right now, if you're in the place, let me just tell you that a lot of people struggle with a growth mindset, and that's why they can't ever have success in the first place. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, you don't understand where I come from. I didn't come from money. Guess what? Neither did I. I grew up on a farm in Grantham, North Carolina for from 12 years old. My father passed away when I was nine years old. We didn't have a lot of money. We, we lived with my grandparents for a while. So so I get it. I'm not saying that your, your situation may be worse than mine. I understand. But it, your past doesn't have to dictate your future. And whatever circumstances you're a part of right now, we get to have some control of how we react to our circumstances. And some of these circumstances, we can actually change ourselves. And you got to have a growth mindset so you don't get stuck in this static way of thinking where the world's happening to you and, and you become a victim of the world. No, no, no. You get to become victorious of the world around you. So, And then once you become victorious, you'll start to have success. So how do you maintain that success? You have to maintain a growth mindset. You have to be aware. And it's, it's, it has to do with what you say to yourself, what you think about, what you expose yourself to. Um, and I'll get to that in a moment. First of all, let me, here's a tip. Do not keep yourself plugged into the news. We're in a, a political environment right now. A lot of people, you see the worst on social media. Some of your friends will have the worst arguments they'll ever have this time of year. They want to blame this Republican party or blame that Republican party. And the worst part is they consider everybody in that Republican party like bad and everybody in that uh, Democrat party bad. And the, polit the politics are insane. It's, it's toxic and it's toxic for your mindset. Listen, the economy can be bad and you can still have a business that's outperforming the economy based on how you conduct yourself within and how you adapt within that business. But you can never, in every weak economy, there are people who go bust. I, I have clients over the years that were real estate agents, and they're like, I'm trying to grow my real estate business, but the economy's bad. Yeah, guess what? 
There's another real estate agent somewhere else, probably in your town, still growing, but you're too busy focused on the economy. So you have to recognize that you can overcome whatever adversity comes your way. You have to develop a growth mindset. Point number one. Point number two is you have to master the art of focus and discipline. Listen, none of us are perfect at this, but you have to get very focused on what you're trying to accomplish. You have to get very focused on what your goals are. I encourage you to have clearly defined goals and prioritize those goals. Don't prioritize them on what do you think is the most important. Prioritize them based on urgency. What do I want to get accomplished this year? I can't let this year or now we're, we're sitting here, you know, coming towards the end of the year. Before the end of the year, I want to get this thing accomplished and get hyper focused on what it is you want to get accomplished. What do I mean by hyper focused? I don't mean, I don't mean that if you're trying to get a, a promotion at work that you only focus on doing good things at work. When you're off the job, you also want to be thinking about what are some things you can be improving on the job. You, when you get hyper-focused, it means your spare mental energy and effort goes towards trying to accomplish that thing that you want to accomplish. If you're in business, if you're an entrepreneur, th then you cannot be the one that's like, I want my businesses to grow, but at 5 o'clock, you clock out and leave like everybody else. You don't even think about it. I'm not saying that you have to work 24-7, 90 hours a week, but I am saying that your part-time spare energy that you have available, that you're not spending with your family, your alone time in the shower, your alone time driving, you want to be thinking about how to get better. You got to be focused on getting better because in order to get better, there's some work that has to happen. There's some effort that has to get put into place. There's some things that you're probably going to have to learn and, and you've got to get focused. You can't allow yourself to get distracted. So you've got to practice focus. And with that focus comes self-discipline will becomes discipline. And by the way, here's the key with discipline. This isn't what the topic's about tonight, but the key with discipline is as you get disciplined, you become more self-confident. The only way to grow self-confidence is consistent discipline. So it takes a certain level of discipline to stay focused. So what do you want to accomplish? How important to you is it? Be serious with yourself and then develop, then, then develop the art of focus, the art of focus. So remember, key number one, key number one was make certain that you develop a growth mindset. Key number two is make certain that you uh, have a, a, that you master the art of focus, the art of focus. Number three, this is a big one. It's important that you leverage the power of relationships. I would even say the power of community. Be very intentional about the friends that you have around you, the community that you have around you, the people that you collaborate with, your coworkers. You don't want to be the, if you're the only top dog in your area, meaning, let me put it this way. If you're a florist owner and you know, you're the, the biggest earner in your family and maybe even your extended family, you're one of the only entrepreneurs and you don't have friends that are other that are also entrepreneurs. You don't have friends that also own florists. I mean, people that you can call to just to, to shoot the, the the crap with, so to speak, that you can, you know, grab a lunch, grab a coffee with. If you don't have that kind of relationship with other people that are going where you're going, then you're going to be significantly disadvantaged. Here's the key. Relationships. You want to make certain that you have relationships of other people that are in line with where you want to go, other peers. And I'm not saying that has to be all your relationships. I'm not telling you to ditch friends. I don't believe in that nonsense. That's not what I'm saying. But cultivate new relationships. Because here's the thing. With the relationships, it becomes first support. There's support there. There's people you can bounce ideas off of. There's people you can give good, wise counsel to. Your business isn't going the way you want it to do. What are you going to do? Go to your Uncle Joe who has never had a business ever in his life because he's too scared to take the risk and because he doesn't want to manage payroll and he doesn't want to hire employees. He doesn't want to deal with customers and you're going to talk to him about your challenges. He's not going to add anything positive to what you're going through because his experience and his desires and the life he's living is just vastly different. So make certain that you're cultivating relationships. And I can give you some tips on this here in a moment but on, on how to do that, but Look, look for people that are entrepreneurs, maybe even in the same town, 
Um, they don't have to be in the same town, but look for those overlaps. You know, it's okay if you have entrepreneurs that, that are look for other florists, maybe other florists in your town. It's too competitive. Then find a florist in another town or another state. Go, go online. Where do florists hang out online? Like actually get to know people. Don't just watch content from creators and influencers and Instagram. Actually interact with people. Get to know people in some sort, even on a digital level. Get to know people somehow. Get to connect with people. Who can you collaborate with? Even in your town as a florist, who can you you know do events with together? Maybe you're a florist and you and, I, and I'm just using that as an example, but your business can collaborate with another business, maybe to do some sort of a event or a home show or something. Get to, you want to find people that can give you support. And here's the thing: at this point in my life, I'm 44 years old. I started business when I was 24, 23. I'm, I'm 44 now, and I can tell you at this moment, at this moment. About to be 45, by the way. But at this moment, I can tell you that a lot of the opportunity that comes my way, some of the best opportunities that come my way has been from connections that I've built, relationships that I have, where we help one another, we encourage one another, and we refer business back and forth. And when there's you know business um, resources needed, we use each other's resources, we help each other out. Oftentimes, this opens up brand new opportunities that you, you never saw coming. I was just having a conversation with someone who I went into business with probably, I don't know, 10 years ago. And her and I are working together on this land development deal right now. And I said, who would have ever imagined, you know, when you were a stay-at-home mom, we were both, you know, in our probably 20s or early 30s and, you know, married or just barely married, no kids. Neither one of us had kids. Today we got families and we're married and, you know, we we done life together, you know, I don't mean like we're best as buds, but we've, we've been in touch, we've stayed in touch, we've never lost contact, and then all of a sudden we end up on this development deal. By the way, we've never lived in the same state or anything either. We were just business acquaintances back here. We end up on this development deal. Like, all of that happens because of relationships, previous relationships. So I encourage you to leverage the power of relationships, and I'm going to give you a couple of tips. If you're in business, join Chamber of Commerce. Look for stuff like that. If you are not in business and you're an employee in a particular career, then look for meetup groups, look for groups in your area, look for conventions, look for seminars, or people in your industry are getting together. Make contacts there as well. Um, here's another option. If you are, well, I'll, I'll just go here. For me, early on, one of the things that I plugged into that sort of, that I attended was a live training event called First Steps to Success. It was through that event that I ended up meeting a lot of people. You ended up making connections. Why? First Steps to Success was a training seminar that was all about people wanting to be able to have success. In other words, it was a room full of people that not only did they have a growth mindset, they were looking to reinforce that growth mindset long term and develop skills to be able to, to better their lives. Phenomenal, phenomenal group of people. That, that event changed my life. I credit it for helping me have success in business early on. And I still attend that event to this day. But here's the key. I, I actually made it a point. I, I got very focused. I actually didn't go to just one of those events. I consistently plugged in to live training events. I, I booked tickets. I went to seminars and that sort of thing. Why? To help me maintain a growth mindset because of the people that I got to meet, because of the support group that I developed in the community. Where else do you find a community of people like a high concentration of people that are good quality people wanting to improve themselves? Listen, most of us can look at our family and see a whole bunch of people that aren't looking to improve themselves. So going to that live event was a, a big deal. And it, it, it also helped keep me accountable. It constantly reminded me of my goals and what I wanted to accomplish. So there's an event coming up. The next First Step Success event is coming up September 13th, 14th, and 15th. 13th, 14th, 15th. There's still seats available, but the hotel is going to be selling out. I recommend you do something crazy. Book a seat. Go down below. There'll be a link. I'm going to be there. I'll see you there. And I'll give you this little tidbit as well. Look for a some sort of a, a mentor. Look for someone you can connect with. Look for a coach or something that uh, can coach you in the area that you're trying to excel. That sort of accountability is really important. Now, coaches run anywhere from, you know, I've paid $1,000 an hour for coaching. I've paid more for coaching. Um, I've seen coaching all the way down to, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars for the hour. Or you can just go to a live training event, get three days of training for less than an hour of coaching. And that, that would be first step success. 
but I recommend that you do something to help hold yourself accountable to where you want to go and what you want to accomplish. So let me, I know I know I told you I would share three keys, but I've shared a lot of information tonight, but let me recap the three keys. Number one is you have to have to develop a growth of mindset. Number two is you have to develop the art of focus and discipline in yourself. And number three, leverage the power of relationships. Leverage the power of relationships. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that you can have success. I believe that you can be successful. I believe that every human was created for a purpose in their life. And your goals and desires are a hint to that purpose. And if you want to understand more and you want to break through what's holding you back, then join me in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina for First Step Success. I'll be there. There'll be other master trainers there as well. Training's phenomenal. Can't wait to see you. If not, then join us here for another Destiny Global Success tip. You don't want to miss it. Have a great night. God bless.